What's up everyone? Welcome to another video. In this video, I'll replace a front left wheel hub bearing assembly on a 2014 Chevy Impala. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe for more how to and review videos. Now let's get started. First, chalk the opposite wheel. I'm doing the front left, so I'll be chalking the rear right. Then break the lug nuts loose. Jack up the vehicle and support it with a jack stand. I use two, because why not? Remove the lug nuts and remove the wheel. Now it's time to get to work. First, remove the brake caliper bracket. There are two mounting bolts, which I already partially removed. One, they won't be sticking halfway out. And two, they require a 21 millimeter socket. After it is removed, suspend it with a coat hanger or something similar, so there's no tension on the brake line. Do not just let it hang on the brake line. That'll damage it and release the brake line from this bracket. The grommet just slides up and out. Next, remove the screw that attaches the rotor to the hub assembly. It requires a T30 Torx bit. Almost, almost there, a little more, and it's out. With the screw removed, pull off the brake rotor. Mine was seized on and needed a little help. Get off of my car. Next, remove the wheel speed sensor. This requires a 10 millimeter socket. First, remove the bolt. Then pull the wired sensor out and move it out of the way. Out of the way. Next up, loosen the axle nut to release the wheel bearing from the CV axle shaft. I believe it requires a 34 millimeter socket, but I used a one and one quarter inch socket because that's what I have. Once loosened, give it a whack to break it loose. The axle should now float inside the hub assembly. Now it's time to remove the wheel bearing. There are three bolts that must be removed from the back. One, two, and three. And back around to the outside. And here they are from the front. The hub assembly has holes tapped all the way through, and the bolts go all the way through it. Use an 18 millimeter socket to remove the bolt toward the front of the car. This is bolt one of three. Then remove the bolt towards the back of the car. Although the bolt was completely unthreaded, I could not get it out because it was trapped by the CV axle. This is bolt two of three. And there is not enough room to access the top bolt, bolt three of three. We need to release the steering knuckle from the strut. There are two bolts, which require an 18 millimeter socket and an 18 millimeter wrench. Bolt number one and bolt number two. Working on the top bolt, loosen the nut, tap it out, and it's out of there. Working on the bottom bolt, loosen the nut, tap it out, and zoink, it's out. With the bolts removed, separate the steering knuckle from the strut. Now there is room to access the last bolt using the 18 millimeter socket. Freedom! And there is also room to remove that second bolt. Next, reinstall the knuckle to strut bolts to hold things securely in place while removing the wheel bearing hub assembly. My vehicles see snow and salt all winter and the wheel bearings experience corrosion and have never come out easily for me. They're always seized in there. But here is a video that I previously made to remove stubborn wheel bearings easily. I will also put a link in the description below. Once it's free, remove the wheel bearing. Get out of there. Out of the way. Then the dust shield. Next, clean up the bore of the steering knuckle so the replacement wheel bearing hub assembly will slip in. And time for the new bearing. I personally go with Timken bearings. They have been around for a long time. I've used several of them, and I've never had an issue with one. I also apply some anti-seize or grease, so it will hopefully come out easier the next time. Now, pretty much reverse the process. I will quickly go through it, and I will show the published torque values if you want to go by the book. I'm showing torque values from Chilton from their online library. Chilton has been publishing automotive repair manuals for over 100 years, but use or verify at your own risk. 
first install the dust shield, then the wheel bearing. Don't forget to install that dust shield first. With the steering knuckle detached to allow access, use an 18mm socket to install the top wheel bearing bolt, and at least get the other two started. By the book, the front wheel bearing hub assembly bolts are yield to torque bolts, which means they are designed as one time use bolts and should be replaced. To tighten them, first torque them to 100 Newton meters, or 74 foot pounds. Then tighten them an additional 60 to 75 degrees. Next, use an 18 mm socket to reconnect the steering knuckle to the strut. Per the book, the nuts are also yield to torque. First tighten them to 85 Newton meters, or 63 foot pounds. Then tighten them an additional 60 to 75 degrees. With the steering knuckle secure, finish tightening up the wheel bearing hub assembly bolts. And you can still push the axle in a little to get additional clearance for your tool. Then use a 10 mm socket to reinstall the wheel speed sensor. No torque is specified. Next, I installed the axle nut. Note that this is also specified as a yield to torque nut. A new nut is required. First, torque it to 150 Newton meters, or 111 foot pounds. Then loosen it 45 degrees. Then tighten it to 250 Newton meters, or 184 foot pounds. Reinstall the brake rotor and retighten the screw with a T30 torque spit. Per the book, the torque is 7 Newton meters, or 62 inch pounds. Then, use a 21mm socket to install the brake caliper bracket bolts. By the book, tighten them to 150 Newton meters, or 111 foot pounds. Then, an additional 45 degrees. And here's a helpful tip. The caliper will slip on easily if you compress the piston a little bit first. And reinstall the brake line into the bracket. Last, reinstall the wheel, tightening the lug nuts to 150 Newton meters or 111 foot-pounds. Return the vehicle to the ground, and don't forget to remove the wheel chalk. So, that gets us through it. That's how I did it, and it went pretty smooth. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe for more how-to and review videos. Drop any comments below, and I'll see you in the next video.